They're priceless. But who would have wanted them? They're of no use, really, to anyone but the Phantom. It seems that this opera ghost of yours does exist. Wow, a detective is... R he's <laughs> really easy to just believe in ghosts. Yeah. He's like, well, oh, there's yeah. a ghost. Monsieur Aubry raises his eyebrows at your statement, but then you shrug your shoulders, indicating that you're only half serious. Oh, come now, I oh, I'm serious, though. I'm serious. They're so close. They just have this hidden, unspoken communication <laughs> where their, their body language just says everything. This is the best line in the game. Falling sandbags are not rumors. <laughs> yes! I know, because I've been carrying one around for several hours. <laughs> it was no accident. It was no accident. That's right. This is murder. Oh, dear. My insurance premium is really going to go up now. <laughs> oh, but I'm glad you're okay. You're all right. Insurance premiums, but I'm, I'm glad I'm not that you're sure okay. They are no, why would the premium go up because of a sandbag? I think it would go up way boat? more because of a giant chandelier that killed, like, dozens oh, yeah. of people. <laughs> I saw a man with a cape and a mask. My dear Raoul, I have only to quote my late friend Samuel Beckett, the playwright. All men are born mad. Some remain so. <laughs> Perhaps you should go home and rest. I don't understand. He put us on this case, I and now he's like, you're crazy. <laughs> all these Adieu, things you Mr. found, Lee. all this evidence, you're insane. Adieu, Raoul. Please return when you've learned more, and we'll talk. Wait, but he just you just told him to leave. Why do you want him to come back? I guess we have to, f we gotta find that gel. Okay. We gotta find that gel. I am certain that that is going to be what triggers. Where did I go? Oh, oops. I don't think I had to do that. Well, you know, it's pretty. We can, we can look at it again. Look at that. It's so beautiful. No, someone was, someone did a really good job of detailing. That's, okay, that's his office, okay. We can oh go God. back here then. And at the very end of the hall is the like the ticket master guy. What's up here? Can we talk to him? Does he have info? Does he have a gel? You actually, <laughs> does he have a gel? No, you cannot talk to him. Hello, uh, we think that we got everything we need. We're gonna mm -hmm. go talk to Bree, or as I like to call him, Bree FF. <sighs> oh, I like get to, it. I like to call him Cheese. I'm hungry. Does Adventure he? games make me hungry. I, I think we, but anyway, I think ah, we got what we need. You're back. We didn't learn anything, anything new, new, but we completed all of the conversations. I thought, I, th I, I think that's where we talk about seems Charles. That this opera ghost oh, of yours does. we must have missed a conversation cue in this. That's why it keeps bringing us back to that. Oh, come now, Raul. See? Oh, oh, oh there it is. That okay. is, that is flipping sneaky. Alike. I didn't, I really honestly didn't know we well, had to complete everything. We're both sane, See, this men. is all weird though, coming after the fact that he's like, hey, I got this note too. Yeah. So, well, I don't believe it, do but I gave it to you this? and apparently I do believe it, so. Perhaps there is more to this than I thought. Yeah, think? Do you really think this could be the work of the original Phantom of the Opera? We have to say yes. Has Eric really returned? We should yes. say yes. I think so. Okay. Well, I shall await further information okay, before this I is commit it. to such a leap of faith. This is it. But the evidence is compelling. Isn't the evidence really compelling, though? Are you guys ready for this? It seems to me we're dealing with the supernatural. Well, if one believes... Oh, okay. I, I hyped that up. It's going to be after this, you? guys. It's going to be after this. Okay, okay. Is the only explanation. Yes, it's the only explanation. It really isn't, though. Then you are much more. <laughs> okay, I hyped it up again. <laughs> after this one, after this one, it's but gonna happen. Does give me yeah, it's creeps. gonna happen. Okay, after I click, ready? Well, Raul. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds as if you've done an excellent job with investigating this case. It seems that all evidence points to the existence of something or someone trying to make us believe that he is the real phantom of the opera. I say we should. <gasps> there it is. Stock screen. That's a coincidence. That? She sounds that? just like the woman in the theater who got killed by the chandelier. <gasps> you now recognize it as Julie Geary's voice screaming in the distance. Wow, Quickly. that the echoes in that place are yeah. amazing. Find out what happened. I'm gonna say that we act. <laughs> Let's give. Oh, I wanted to give Bree the mask. <laughs> Oh good, I thought I actually thought we had to like walk there, but they're gonna they're gonna teleport us there. Thank 
fucking god. Like, Finally. seriously. Are we gonna bring her some flowers? Here, I got you this like, plant. I got this plant. I'm a, I'm it's for you. I'm a romantic type. I'm, I'm gonna give it to you right now. It's like oh, a, wait, oh. never mind. Yes, I saw him, monsieur. The phantom. He was wearing his mask this time. I was backstage when he came running out of the stage right stairwell. He ran up the circular staircase towards the fly loft. Hurry, he's probably still there. I'm on it. <laughs> Look how quickly I'm going. Walk across rug. Do you hear the uh, hear the music? It's so intense. Here we go. It's now, you would think because there's been a murder, we might need the axe. We do not. We oh, don't really? take we don't take any weaponry. We just go up there. I mean, obviously we well, we walk over there. <laughs> he, like, hurry, you can catch him. Uh, I'm on it. <laughs> Left foot, right foot. <laughs> oh, Raul. <laughs> that music though, right? It, it, it's it's pretty tense, but his pacing doesn't match it. He is just like, I don't flipping care if Christine was just murdered by some guy who's now fleeing the scene. She was weird anyway. It told us about her, we her weird sex dreams and stuff. Yeah. It was gonna happen anyway. To be fair, who hasn't had a sex dream about a um, mask? I'm just not gonna continue the sentence. Uh, yeah, I, I yeah. was gonna say not me. <laughs> I do have very strange, like, sex dreams, but not with men in masks. <laughs> too, I've, I've, too bad, they're pretty fun. I, oh, all right. No, I've, <laughs> or so I've been told uh, by other people. Of course. You know, you know what the worst thing is? Like, Raul's I've had- walking. I, <laughs> Yes, Raul's walking. I've actually had, like, naughty dreams about other producers, and every time I do, I feel like I can't talk to them. <laughs> I'm just like, oh shit. And it, it just happens, because you talk to a lot of people, you meet mm. a lot of produ- You know, it just happens. It's no one's fault. And it's like, I can't talk to you now. You know. You know that I had a sex dream about you, don't you? Oh, see, if you so have awkward. one about me, I, I was never going to talk again. No more let's plays. Oh, I accidentally. Okay, are you guys ready okay. for this? He's thinking. Here we about go. Walking. Here we go. <gasps> there was something behind the tarps. Fight. Ah! How far <laughs> on the, up the stage were we? It wasn't that far down. There were more stairs and went up to Christine's room. <laughs> You awake, as if from a deep, dark sleep. You could swear that it was a kiss that woke you. You are gazing into the eyes of a beautiful girl. She resembles Christine Florent, but it is not her. A strange man stands beside her. Your head hurts. You feel dizzy and disoriented. Raul, Raul wake up. Are you all right? Monsieur de Chenet. Oh, oh dear. I guess oh, Freud is helping dear. us. So we are back Wait, in time. <gasps> yeah, we are back. We act, when we fell, we actually went back in time to the opera God. ghosts thing. Oh, Raoul, are you all right? Can you hear me? Where am I? While you're on the stage of the opera, you had a bad fall. What were you doing in the flight? Oh my God! Off, what is Raul? wrong with her voice? I don't you're know. I've never figured it out. Breath. This my is supposed love. to be the woman who's been, been trained killed. by an opera ghost to have the voice but, of an angel. Yeah, this is this is yeah. Oh, she's an me. opera singer. She's um, a a prima donna ballerina, like a diva. The I guess they call them divas, you right? Mean the opera ghost. You saw him, my dear Vicomte. Are you sure? He's had a bad fall, Monsieur Richard. He needs to rest. Did you call me Vicomte? What do you mean? V Vicomte. Raoul, don't tell us that you have amnesia. <laughs> oh, you Lord. Are Raoul, the Vicomte de have you forgotten? Oh, these pronunciations are terrible. Dear they Raoul, try so hard, though. This game tries hard, so it? hard. We told you your name. That solved you your amnesia, right? This We probably sound like a crazy person right now. Mademoiselle yeah. Florent? Who is that? <laughs> Poor man is delirious. Shall we take him to the hospital? Who are you? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Remember Christine Day? Perhaps you should see a doctor, Raoul. They have the accent mark, but they don't use it. That's no. very strange. Yeah. Christine Day? But you look like Christine Florent. Well, who is Christine Florent? I think you must see the doctor. Wait, can you tell me the date? 
Wait, wait, wait a minute. What is the year? The year? Why? Oh, so that gives us that gives us a time frame. So when we when we actually run into Edgar Degas, we can look up exactly which paintings he was doing at oh the time. God. This stuff matters. It really does. It really does. Uh, why does she say why tis eighteen? Why tis Christmas Day, sir? Who is he? <laughs> Thank you, young boy. You know Monsieur Vichal. He's the manager of the opera. He's one of your closest friends. So this is the manager, this is Brie, basically. Don't worry about it, old man. Rest your head, it will all come back to you in a while. But I must So why know are the descendants of everybody from the story magically wearing. coming together come in the from? future? I have never seen that style before. It's like it's like the fuller <laughs> yeah. house of Phantom of the Opera. I have no idea. The tuxedo? Whatever happened to I, the Phantom uh, of the Opera? I got it in London. That's it. Did I, wait, was that the only that option? Yeah, I guess it was. Those Englishmen are always trying to push the boundaries of fashion. Please go now. Please go Let now. Go Please now. go. Get out of my sight. Please science. go. I must run out for a bit, Raoul. I shall be in my dressing room in a while. Please, come visit me. I need to speak with you. My door will be open when I'm back. Rest, Do you know what I mean? Don't overtax <laughs> yourself. Adieu. See you soon. You take it easy, Raoul. I shall be in my office. Come see me in a bit. I have received yet another note from our friend, the Opera Ghost. Um, look at that dress animation. Somebody put thought into that. It does look really nice. I gotta give props. Look, because the thing is, like, she's like, please come see me. I want to talk to you. But in, especially in the book, she's so afraid of the Opera Ghost. She wants nothing to do with, with really? Raoul because they grew up together and they to have me? this connection. I've gone back in time somehow. And they say I'm Raoul de Chagny. This is bizarre. I must be dreaming. Why would, why would your first I'll instinct to see someone unconscious to be to kiss them? This is not like Sleeping Beauty here. <laughs> wake up! Make out. <laughs> this will oh, make you yeah. see going. Oh, well, I'm oh he pinched himself. He pinched himself. Pinched yeah. his butt. I guess all I can do is that sweet, this sweet butt. That I'll sweet, tell you about. sweet, flat plane of a butt. Does he still have that sandbag? Oh, I'll go along with this, whatever it is. Is that innuendo? <laughs> is that a metaphor? <laughs> do you still Monsieur have that sandbag? Ten pounds. I've got your number. Like that phone, is like very... Number? We have nothing in our inventory, actually. Uh, so we're going to save the game as the past. All right. Well, now it's our present. So. Beth is going to tell me exactly what to do. All right. Uh, we're going to exit... We're gonna go that way. Yes. We're gonna saunter, and we're gonna take the something yellow. The, the gel. Okay, so here's what I don't get. Did the recollect the same gels from Correct. before? Why are they? Why are they there back in time? Did they didn't I don't have know. gels back in. They didn't have those kind of gels back in 1880. They came with us back in time and and got to the same spots that they were in the present. Why? I I don't even know. I don't even. Oh, okay. So there's a little add-on here. At first you ignore the discarded object, but then you realize this is a modern color fr frame. What's it doing here in 1881? Because now, you're not in 1881, everyone's just messing with you. There has got to be something with these frames. I don't know if they're just there to like show you that you are in fact in all right, so like let's go ahead and let's go to the backstage. Let's go chill back there. I bet Charles will be there being persnickety as usual. Or Charles cannot be there. Charles is not here. Charles is immortal. Charles will never we, die. That's tragic. We he's, might have a... He's there to haunt you with his never-ending conversations. <gasps> Charles, no! Sniff. Come back, Charles! <laughs> Don't worry, we'll find somebody with an equal uh, amount of disdain for us. Disdain and sinus problems. All right, so we're going to go... And there's a cable hook. There or... is a cable hook. We're gonna, gonna take, take it. That shit. All and right. go up. We, let's go up to the catwalk again. We're gonna go up to the catwalk again. Maybe we'll fall again and we'll come back in the present. And, and all that's the end of the solved. game. Yes. That's the end of the game. We just fall and that's it. And we don't figure out anything. And I would be okay with that because he walks so damn slow. It is like irritating. Or it's like a Groundhog Day situation. Every time he goes up there, he fights the Phantom and he goes further back and further back until he's mm -hmm. like back in what 10 1081 I should I should mention that uh, as a kid 
never got past that part where I got pushed off the catwalk. I was so, so sc- I was so scared <gasps> that I just gave up. <laughs> I gave up as a kid. So Aww. obviously I redid it as an adult, but as a kid I'm like, nope. No, thank you. That was actually, when I was a kid, I saw the, like, vampire in a hospital episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Vampire in a hospital? Yeah, there was, like, a vampire killing people in a hospital. It's actually kind of scary for Are You Afraid of the Dark? But I remember seeing it. Some of those get scary. They get gross. They get, like, terrifying. And it, oh, it's back up! It is back up. We can go down there. We're really, oh, can we climb on the chandelier and play with it? Uh, That's not recommended. (laughs) Because that, that shand, I mean, think about the future. It is going to fall. Uh, but yeah, what you were saying about the vampire Oh, yeah. So um, I was watching it, and I got to the point right where they're about to try and kill the vampire in its coffin. And my parents had to leave. We had to leave. And I'm like, no, 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 I have to stay. So I didn't get to finish it. For, like, several years, I was terrified of the vampire being in my closet. Wow. And I didn't watch it finished it until I found it on YouTube like a year ago and I was like I can understand why I was scared by this but it's kind of stupid now yeah (gasps) so here's the chandelier I love the the um the art it is really pretty it uh, it's it's, just not the chandelier the chandelier is a magnificent work of art and is surprisingly sturdy not for long at least it holds your weight and remains relatively steady as you so do we need to I assume we don't need to collect anything from the chandelier at this point. No, I think we're just chilling just there. Just kind of looking at it. Okay. We're just, just testing that arm strength. By the way, I bet if we had that 10-pound sandbag still, it would probably be too much and it would get I, I just, I can't over. hear 10-pound sandbag without thinking of some kind of sexual metaphor. <laughs> like, it's really weird. <laughs> what is it about sand? I don't know. Well, you know, the Christine Florent was attracted to him right away. Because he right was away. carrying that 10-pound sandbag. It does a lot. You it, know, it does a lot. Yeah. For the shape and the size. <laughs> We're going into weird sexual territory. Yeah. I'm sorry, there's a lot of sexuality in Phantom of the Opera. Okay, I can't so, help it. Uh, we need to go back this way, and we need to go down, way downstairs. I gotcha. Yeah, go, let's go way downstairs, gotcha. and we're going to go find stuff and talk to people. Because that's pretty much this whole game. That is, is the whole game, yep. Walking, talking, and picking up stuff. I like this premise though, as mm-hmm. like a as like a phantom thing. Like I feel like, even if you're like a really devout phantom fan, let's say you know all the lore, I think you will find novelty in mm-hmm. this game. You know, it's kind of like. Um, well, I gotta say, like as a sequel. fan of the book much more than the musical, I do. You know, spoilers, you guys. I don't like the musical. Uh, <laughs> like the the movie or the oh wait but, no. well I hate the movie the movie is garbage I'm not the biggest fan of the musical as a whole mm-hmm. oh look there's another one I got it um but I actually am liking this these callbacks to the original mm-hmm. story much more than how they're called back to in the musical because yeah. to me the musical is just like Andrew Lloyd Webber has the biggest boner for the Phantom. I'm just going to cut off that second sentence in our recording. <laughs> just be like, he's <laughs> the, the biggest, biggest boner. boner. Oh, look at this guy. He's he, he's a gentleman. Hello, sir. Let's talk to that so guy. So this is, I guess, this is kind of like the Charles of the past. I think he's actually <gasps> much oh, nicer, though. Does, does he have as much swagger? All right, what is the... Yeah, let's, let's who are we talking to? Whom might I be addressing? I am Jacques, and I know who you are, monsieur. It is a pleasure to meet the Vicomte This Charles. guy is actually much nicer than Charles. Like, I can we know. just bring him back to the future with us? I don't know, he still sounds what snarky What do you do here shit. at the opera, monsieur? I am the prompter. I stick my head through the hole up here in the ceiling and prompt the actors if they forget something. Wonderful job, but it was a bit hard on the feet. Uh, until they installed that little seat. At my insistence, I might add, I used to have to stand for the duration of the entire opera. You are not the opera ghost, I take it. Raul, that's that's not that's <laughs> not subtle detective work. <laughs> oh, mon dieu, Lord, no! I don't look a bit like it. Uh, you're not the murderer, are you? <laughs> you don't wear a mask and just go around murdering women, do you? Have you ever seen the opera ghost? We, oui, I have indeed. I was in the fly loft helping with rigging some scenery. I was holding onto a purchase line when I looked up and saw him. He was standing on the catwalk, watching me closely. 
What did he look like? He was tall and, and was wearing dark, formal attire. He had a long cape. I could not see his face, for he was wearing a mask. He didn't react at all when I looked at him. He just... In the past, he's wearing a mask, but when Julie Geary saw him, it was like a, she saw like a skull, like a skull face. Mm -hmm. uh, where are we here? That's because he was really ugly. Why does he wear a mask? At least mask, before Angel Lloyd Webber got his hands on him. Yeah. Why to cover the hideousness of his deformity? It is said that no man can look upon his features and not be repulsed. What happened after he stood staring at you? We had a face-off for several minutes. I was too terrified to move. Then, after a while, he simply pulled his cape around himself and vanished into thin air. I almost dropped the line I was holding. What can you tell me about the opera ghost? Only what I have heard from other people. His real name is Eric, and he's as much flesh and blood as you or I. He lives beneath the opera, deep within the catacombs. He's been in the catacombs? I, know, I have been down there. So I lost my I lost my place. Okay, so we uh, <laughs> what are we asking him here? We need to ask him oh. about the catacombs. Okay, gotcha. how do I gotcha. find the catacombs? Oh, he might actually know. Charles They've didn't know, but he might long. know. Oh, there was once an entrance from the cellar, but it was too drafty. <laughs> now there is no entrance. Oh, are we gonna travel through sewage? sewage yes. Oh, so exciting. Well, you yeah, the technically the we're gonna go below the entrance. sewers. Sometimes I hear his music through the wall. His music? Yes. He has a pipe organ in his abode. And some who nice uses the word abode? Like in casual conversation, who Much uses the word abode? Especially considering he's from modern times, so he doesn't need to speak of the time period. He could be like, dude, where does that dude bro live? Do you know anything about his past? He was born disfigured. The first gift his mother gave to him was a mask. Despite his handicap, he grew up exceptionally intelligent. And See, this actually gets closer to the book than the musical ever did, which I like. I like that they, they're they paying attention to a counts? lot of the details of the book. Yeah, that's kind of good. I mean, first and it's a good... He studied music. It's clear homage. They, and then later, it's clear they did research. Yeah. I've not told anyone else this, but... Well, I knew him as a child. This is how I know. What, what is this music that just came in? I have... It's ding, like ding, chamber ding. music. Uh, where are we? Okay, we need to go to where to start our architecture. Where did he study architecture? He taught himself. He was not a social person. He only went to school and in then his early about years. why did he go into He was tormented by the other children much too often. He quickly learned he was not wanted. What brought him to live in the catacombs? He practiced his architectural knowledge in Persia, building palaces for the rulers there. He was especially Why does this guy know so much? I don't know. Like experience? He also a knack for magic and illusion. Somehow, he came to the attention of Charles Garnier, the opera architect. And Garnier hired him? Yes. He worked in private, so as not to frighten the other workers. I don't know. If, I don't remember if any of this is actually from the book. I think they might I just be making this part no, up. No, I think I would say that this is made up, for sure. Or unless somebody knows in the comments if you really know, like, every single lore, if this is made up, or if this is taken from somewhere, feel free yeah, because the whole to thing, let us know. The thing I remember is that there was so much mystery around the Phantom, and the new managers came in, they didn't give a yes, crap about any of it. I right. was in one of his first school classes, and I was one of the boys who taunted him. It's why I'm so afraid of him now. When I saw him on the catwalk, I felt he was considering some sort of revenge. Okay, then. Okay. I think we're done with him. Thank you for your time, monsieur. He monsieur. was a lot better than Charles, I'm, I'm gonna say Thank that you. much. Monsieur. Okay. Do you know who that is? Um, it looks like he's about to flash me? With this. his coat? <laughs> I'm selling these watches. No, this is Edgar Degas. Why he is here? Bonjour. No one knows. He looks like Van Gogh. I don't know. Why, hello there, Degas. Let's ask him who, who he is. You? This is just the creepiest thing. Edgar Degas. I am the Are you 